Hey guys, what's up? And today we're going to talk about the myth of work-life balance. I've had the good fortune of spending most of my 20s living a highly focused, unbalanced life. And I'm so glad I did so because had I gone the route of my peers, uh, I would have been stuck in an average life, which means a life straight out of my nightmares. I thought that I was expected to settle for average. The reasoning behind this was that after all, if I had stayed where I was born, my quality of life would have been terrible. I assumed I was expected to live a simple life with a basic job and enjoy the freedom that America <laughs> afforded me. You know, peace, security, and lots of entertainment. Instead, I spent the decade of my 20s immersed in the world of direct sales, door to door. I strive to become a better recruiter, a better sales manager, and a better salesman. At most points during the year, every waking moment was spent obsessing over my closing ratios, over my approach ratios, the performance of my teams, and how I could get access to better training material. That was my life. There was no balance. I had no girlfriend. I spoke to my family once a week over the phone, only on Sundays. And the funny thing is that even while working 80 hours a week, I failed over and over again. I was an underperformer for years <laughs> and literally the worst salesman in the company. Every few months, I would buy into the college life mentality. You know, I'd smoke weed, I'd watch endless episodes of Lost, I'd get drunk, I'd go to the club and try to pick up girls. I'd masturbate to porn and I'd play World of Warcraft. I needed to enjoy my college life is what I said to myself. And every time I did that for a few months, my performance at work became absolutely horrible. Eventually, after going into debt and having to sell my car to make rent, I finally admitted to myself that I wasn't a professional and it would actually take me years of focused work to get good enough at my craft to make a living. So I cleaned up my act. I temporarily quit my door-to-door -door business. This was easy. All of my sales reps had quit on me because I was a bad leader. I mean, I was never on time. I set goals for them that I myself couldn't achieve. I skipped work and I yelled at them almost every day. I was a terrible leader and I admit it. So what I did was I joined Altel as a cell phone salesman and got rid of my TV and video games. I got into a relationship and I focused on rising through the ranks of Altel. Within three months, I was the number one rookie in that district and I was getting better every day. Now, a few months later, I got a call from the president of a publishing company that uh, actually contracted my sales team for the past few years. And he wanted me to come back and give it one more shot. Now, with my new unbalanced and focused mindset, I returned and I ended up building a successful six-figure organization over the next seven years. Work-life balance is one of the most dangerous phrases uh, to an ambitious man in his 20s because it implies that if you don't have balance in your life, you will end up being a bad father or a workaholic or an uncaring and distant partner or, or a paper chaser. You know, it carries this threat of burnout or damaging your health or throwing away your best years and living with regrets. And you read the stories of all the regrets that old dying people had. You know, I wish I spent more time with my family. I wish I watched the sunrise more. I wish that I was there for my kid's ball game. I wish, I wish, I wish. Those stories you hear from people on their deathbed are the stories of those who preached work-life balanced and lived it in their 20s. Instead of working to create freedom for themselves later in life, they focused on getting a paycheck. Instead of waiting till they were financially stable to get married or to have kids, they listened to those who said, listen, there's no right time to get married or have kids. You'll know when it's the time, just do it. They pulled the trigger early and added many mouths to feed in their family. As a result, they became obsessed with supporting their family and ended up spending most of their days working. They missed games, birthdays and anniversaries in order to support their family financially and money became overly important to them. Now on their deathbeds, they're full of regret. You don't have to take that path. Now women also preach work-life balance. Why is this? 
Because when a woman is ready to settle down with a life partner, the last thing that she needs is a man who is never home. One of the key factors in a woman's decision to settle down with a man long term is his ability to provide for her and her future children. The Hollywood fantasy of the good looking business owner who is, you know, amazing at work and is home every night, right on time for dinner, who reads the kids a bedtime story and makes love to his wife till she orgasms multiple times, then sweet talks her till she falls asleep and takes the entire family to vacation several times a year is alive and well. The reality is that in your quest to climb the corporate ladder or build your business or achieve anything in life worth achieving, there will be sacrifice. There will not be balance. You will have to become an expert at time management. You will have to give up certain things in life for a few years and sometimes forever. You will have to be very strategic and creative with your career. So does life have to suck if you are ambitious? Absolutely not. Your life has to have a plan. Most men have some drives during their 20s, such as the drive for money, success, and power, and the drive for sex, love, and companionship. And later on, when you come to the stage where you want to maybe leave a legacy in the form of children, that's a, that's a drive you're going to have, a business or an ideal, something that you can leave to show that you actually existed on this planet. Now, you need fun. You need sex, companionship, and entertainment to function well as an ambitious man. In your 20s, if you are single, it's fine to dedicate two evenings of your week to going out to meet women or going on dates or hanging out with the guys. It's okay to play video games or watch your favorite TV show for an hour or two a week. This obviously implies that the vast majority of your week will be spent earning money and learning new skills like sales, marketing, and public speaking. Any time left over is dedicated to your health and your family. Now there are 168 hours in a week. And the week of an ambitious man in his 20s should look something like this. You can spend 70 to 80 hours working and learning new skills that will last you a lifetime. College is included in this if this is the path you're taking. You can take 45 to 50 hours to sleep or rest, five hours for your fitness, and 10 hours is just lost time. That's time spent commuting, looking for parking, running errands for your parents, and other unfruitful tasks at work, like because you're not experienced. Uh, being stuck in traffic, emergencies like your car breaking down, goofing off on social media, and just doing nothing. And then you can spend 15 hours, maybe up to 20 hours, dating, sex, hanging out with friends, girlfriends, whatever. There is enough time in a week to sleep seven hours a night, hit the gym, work, learn, have a social life, and even sit around doing absolutely nothing. All right? Having your weekends broken down like this puts you in a position to afford to spend more time on other activities that you enjoy later in life, but while you're still young enough to truly enjoy these things. And if you plan to have a family in your 30s, living this way in your 20s ensures that you will have the financial resources to do so. So if you like dating beautiful women and traveling around the world, living this way will allow you to do so later in life but not when you're an old man. Many ambitious or entrepreneurial millennials have a role model that they look up to in business. From my early 20s, I compiled a list of successful people in the public eye and I researched them to find out what their schedules were like and the sacrifices they made, how balanced their lives were in order to get to where they are today. And today I'm going to share that with you. The first is Grant Cardone. Now, Grant Cardone worked over 90 hours per week when he decided to start his seminar business. He worked from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, making cold calls, including on weekends. He did not get married or have kids until he was 46 years old, proving that even if you missed your 20s, it's not too late to achieve your huge goals. Now, with an estimated net worth of over $100 million, he seems to be doing quite well. The exact stats of his work ethic are in two of his books, specifically The 10X Rule and Be Obsessed or Be Average, and there are links to these books in the description below. 
The second is Jordan Zimmerman. Now Jordan Zimmerman is the chairman of Zimmerman Advertising and he's got a net worth of about $4.4 billion. His career in advertising began in his 20s with $10,000 which he had saved up through his childhood and teens from selling greeting cards door to door. And after graduating from his college, to save costs, he slept on his parents' couch for a few years while building his agency. He didn't go on dates, he didn't have a relationship, and he didn't buy new clothes. Now Zimmerman didn't have kids till he was 47 years old. And now he's in his 60s. He still sleeps roughly about five hours a night and is up at 4 a.m. to work out for two hours every day. Now the exact details of his work ethic can be found in his book, Leading Fearlessly. Again, there's a link to it in the description below. The third person is Arvin Lau. Now, Arvin Lau is the CEO of the supplement company Shreds, and Shreds was formed in 2012 when Arvin was 27 years old. Thanks to strategic social media marketing on Instagram, his company generated seven figures in revenue within a few months. Now, Arvin is well known for being very vocal about his work ethic, and he claims he works 16 to 18 hour days regularly. His days begin at 10 a.m. and end at 7 p.m. When he returns home, he works out, he showers, wears a fresh pair of clothes, and then returns to work for a second shift till about 5 a.m. The third is Mark Manson. Now, Mark Manson is a popular blogger with one of the most read blogs in the world, markmanson.net. And I remember Mark in particular because I was coached by him way back in the day. Now, when Mark quit his corporate job in his mid-twenties and decided to become a full-time writer, he actually worked on his business for 10 to 16 hours a day. And according to him, it took him 18 months to make a full-time income, during which he was supported by an ex-girlfriend and moved in with his mother to save costs. In his own words, and I quote, When I wanted to leave the bank, a number of friends and family members suggested that I continue to build my business on the side until I had a steady income. In hindsight, I think if I would have done that, I would not have made it. Giving up would have been too easy. I wouldn't have had the time or energy necessary to do it. That ever-present fear motivating me would have been gone. The terror that jumping in headfirst gave me was my most powerful asset. I was committed. I'd win or die trying. I sold my possessions, which were video games, computer, furniture, guitars, everything. I stopped most of my hobbies. I lost contact with a number of friends. I knew all of these things would return once I became successful, but failure was not an option. That sacrifice has paid off. Mark has two best-selling books and a third in the works, which he's writing with Will Smith. Yes, he is co-authoring Will Smith's biography. Those two books are The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck and Models Attracting Women Through Honesty. There are links to those two books in the description below. The next person is Nido Quibian. Now, Nido is the president of High Point University. He's also the chairman of the board of Great Harvest Bread Company and sits on the board of directors of BBNT, the bank, and Lazy Boy. As president of High Point University, his annual compensation is almost three million US dollars and his net worth is estimated to be in the mid eight figures. Now, Nito arrived in the United States at the age of 18 years old with just $50 in his pocket and he barely spoke a word of English. He taught himself English and started his first business, a motivational newsletter in his 20s, working 17 hours per day to get it off the ground. This was before the advent of personal computers when newsletters were physically mailed. So as the newsletter grew to tens of thousands of subscribers, he started getting invitations to speak at the various groups which received his newsletter. He translated this into a lucrative professional speaking career, after which he began to invest in real estate and in other companies. You can read about him in one of his more popular books called Stairway to Success, The Complete Blueprint for Personal and Professional Achievement. The link is in the description below. There are also others like Scott Alexander, the highest paid professional trainer in Europe who routinely works for over 48 hours with no sleep, has an amazing physique and below 7% body fat year round. I've left a link to his Instagram page below. And Malcolm X, yes, Malcolm X 
who, when released from prison after serving seven years and joining the Nation of Islam, slept about three hours a night while driving across the country for years building up their organization. Although he's controversial, he's also a great study in the power of personal development. See, he went to prison at the age of 20, completely illiterate. He couldn't read or write. He taught himself to read by reading the dictionary from cover to cover. And he emerged from prison, not only educated, but he became one of the most persuasive speakers in the history of the United States. There are a few other notable mentions that you should check out, like Robert Ringer, of course, everybody knows Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, Lewis Howes, and S.B. Fuller. That's somebody to look up. In short, when you hear the phrase work-life balance, you're either in the presence of someone who is willfully trying to manipulate you or a brainwashed individual who lives a life that is nothing close to what you aspire to. In conclusion, I spent my 20s building skills, failing over and over, and working hard to save money. I also had fun while staying healthy and fit. I had a frustrating sexual life at first, like most guys, but as my income grew in my 20s and as my social skills improved, my sex life became much better, so I don't have any regrets there. Work-life balance is a dangerous idea to buy into if you are ambitious. If you aren't, then you're actually in the wrong place. You're in the wrong channel and you're going to be going to the wrong blog. The fact is, there is enough time to do everything that you want to in one week. And if you aren't able to do so, it means that you need to work more on your time management skills. Living an unbalanced life in your 20s allows you to live a life that others can only dream of in their late 20s, 30s, and for the rest of their life. I hope this helps demonstrate the myth of balance and the true value of working really hard in your 20s. If you have an opinion about this or a story to share, please do so in the comments. I'd love to hear it. And if you found this video helpful, take a moment to share it with three other men who you feel might benefit from it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you really want to know every time I release a new video, click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button above. Have a great day.